You're listening to The Philosopher's Note on the Book of Understanding. More wisdom in less time. Hi, this is Brian. Welcome to The Philosopher's Notes on The Book of Understanding, Creating Your Own Path to Freedom by Osho. We'll start with a quote. Osho says, quote, I don't teach the middle way. I teach the total way. Then a balance comes of its own accord. And then that balance has tremendous beauty and grace. You have not forced it. It is simply come. By moving gracefully to the left, to the right, in the middle, slowly a balance comes to you because you remain so unidentified. When sadness comes, you know it will pass. And when happiness comes, you know that it will pass too. Nothing remains. Everything passes by. The only thing that always abides is your witnessing. That witnessing brings balance. That witnessing is balance. End quote. Osho, he's a powerful dude. Attempting to capture his essence in a six-page PDF is almost laughable, but... That's why you pay me the big bucks, so let's get on it. (laughs) If you haven't read any Osho yet, his Book of Understanding is a great place to start. My copy is basically one long underline with flurries of asterisks and dog-eared pages. I trust you'll dig the gems I've mined in this note. Let's jump right in. The first big idea is Zorba the Buddha. Quote, My concept of a new human being is one that will be Zorba the Greek, and will also be Gautam the Buddha. The new human being will be Zorba the Buddha. Sensuous and spiritual. Physical, utterly physical, in the body, in the senses, enjoying the body and all that the body makes possible. And still a great consciousness, a great witnessing will be there. Zorba the Buddha. It has never happened before. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about the meeting of the East and the West. The meeting of materialism and spirituality. That's my idea of Zorba the Buddha. Heaven and earth are united. End quote. Zorba the Buddha, the ultimate yes and. Here's a quick context. Zorba the Greek was a fictional character fully engaged in living an all-out sensual life. While, of course, the Buddha reached a state of enlightened consciousness. Osho says this, quote, Zorba is blind. He cannot see but he can dance, he can sing, he can rejoice. The Buddha can see, but he can only see. He is pure eyes, just clarity and perception, but he cannot dance. He is crippled, he cannot sing, he cannot rejoice. As Osho says, quote, It is the synthesis of matter and soul. It is a declaration that there is no conflict between matter and consciousness, that we can be rich on both sides. We have everything that the world can provide, everything that science and technology can produce, and we can still have everything that a Buddha, a Kabir, a Nanak finds in his inner being, the flowers of ecstasy, the fragrance of godliness, the wings of ultimate freedom. End quote. So how about you? Do you have a big old split between your spiritual side and your materialist side? Me too at times. But I'm a Gemini, so at least I have an excuse, right? (laughs) Seriously, though, this either-or stuff is the greatest threat to our well-being. And Osho goes off on how religions have deliberately created this split and thereby destroyed our essence. But we'll save that for another conversation. You can check out my notes on Ken Wilber for some more mojo on the whole yes-and versus either-or business, um, as well as the transcend and include ideas. And check into your own life. How are you split? Do you have the story that you can be either spiritual or wealthy? Into serving the world or into making money? Sensual or spiritual? you got to pay attention to those either ors. Maslow, and you can see the notes, talks about the fact that in the healthiest among us, this apparent dichotomy dissolves. He says this about his, quote, self-actualizers. Our subjects are simultaneously both very spiritual and very pagan, and sensual even to the point where sexuality becomes a path to the spiritual and the religious. Duty cannot be contrasted with pleasure, nor work with play, when duty is pleasure, when work is play, 
and people doing their duty are simultaneously seeking pleasure and being happy. And he concludes with, if the most socially identified people are themselves the most individualistic people, of what use is it to retain the polarity? If the most mature are also the most childlike, and if the most ethical and moral people are also the lustiest and most animal, end quote. That's basically Zorba the Buddha in a nutshell. So get your Zorba the Buddha on, will ya? And if you ever make it out to Osho's Meditation Resort in Pune, India, you'll get a chance to dine at the Zorba the Buddha poolside restaurant while you watch all the maroon bathing suit clad peeps cruising around. If you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> all right, the next big idea is how much intensity can you muster? Quote, do things with your whole heart, with as much intensity as you are capable of, end quote. The Buddha says pretty much the same thing in the Dhammapada. You can see the notes on that. He says, quote, if anything is worth doing, do it with all your heart. And Osho also says, quote, it is not a question of which part you follow. It is a question of whether you go totally into it or not. To be total in your action brings joy. Even an ordinary, trivial action done with total intensity brings a glow to your being, a fulfillment, a fullness, a deep contentment. And anything done half-heartedly, however good the thing may be, is going to bring misery. End quote. So are you split, timidly going halfway? Well, this is all caps in the note. Do things with all your heart. So how are you holding back in your life? How can you turn that intensity up a notch or maybe 10? Think about that and get on it. The next big idea is life is a tension between the opposites. Quote, to be in the middle is not a static state. It is a dynamic phenomenon. Balance is not a noun. It is a verb. It is balancing. The tightrope walker continuously moves from the left to the right, from the right to the left. When he feels now he has moved too much to one side and there is danger of falling, he immediately balances himself by moving to the opposite side. In passing from the left to the right, yes, there is a moment when the tightrope walker is in the middle. And again, when he has moved too much to the right and there is a fear of falling, he is losing balance, he starts moving to the left and again passes through the middle for a moment, end quote. That's amazing. Osho also says, quote, why do we want to be in the middle in the first place? We are afraid of the dark side of life. We don't want to be sad. We don't want to be in a state of agony. But that is possible only if you are also ready to drop the possibility of being in ecstasy. There are a few people who have chosen it. That is the way of the monk. For centuries, that has been the way of the monk, ready to sacrifice all possibility of ecstasy just to avoid the agony. He is ready to destroy all the roses just to avoid the thorns. But then his life is just flat, a long, long boredom, stale, stagnant. He does not really live. He is afraid to live. So this idea of balance being a verb, balancing, not a noun, is really big. How are you showing up? Are you willing to embrace life and see it as the life of a tightroper, realizing that your perfect balance is always dynamic? Or are you so afraid of falling and touching a thorn that you've stepped off the rope and thrown away all the roses? We've got to embrace all of life. As Campbell says, quote, there is an important idea in Nietzsche of amor fati, the love of your fate, which is in fact your life. As he says, if you say no to a single factor in your life, you have unraveled the whole thing. Furthermore, the more challenging or threatening the situation or context to be assimilated and affirmed, the greater the stature of the person who can achieve it. The demon that you can swallow gives you its power, and the greater life's pain, the greater life's reply. End quote. So say yes to life. Hop up on that tightrope, quit looking for balance, and have fun balancing as you get your dynamic equanimity on, will ya? Pretty please? One more thought from Osho on this theme. He says, live life in all possible ways. Don't choose one thing against the other. And don't try to be in the middle. Don't try to balance yourself. Balance is not something that can be cultivated. 
Balance is something that comes out of experiencing all the dimensions of life. Balance is something that happens. It is not something that can be brought about through your efforts. If you bring it through your effort, it will be false, forced. End quote. So the next big idea is witness, witness, witness. Quote, you have to face your fear and do the same with anger. Do the same with jealousy. Do the same with hatred. And a significant point to remember is if you witness anything, fear, anger, hate, if you simply watch them as they arise without any judgment or condemnation, they will disappear, leaving a tremendous amount of energy that you can use for creativity. And you will have to use it. The leaks have disappeared and you will be overflowing with energy. But if you witness your love, compassion, kindness, humbleness, they will not disappear. They also have tremendous energy, but the more you witness them, the stronger they will become in you. They will overwhelm you. End quote. Well, it's hard to say anything about that except what he said. <laughs> Seriously, though, do you practice witnessing? It's one of the most powerful ways to dissolve our negative habits and remove the resistance that keeps us separated from our highest selves. All the great teachers profess the power of being able to observe our behaviors, thoughts, feelings, particularly the destructive ones, rather than think we are those behaviors, thoughts, and feelings. Something magical happens when we can simply observe, witness, and see yourself in action. Next time you're feeling funky, see if you can see yourself. And then see if your ability to curiously watch yourself dissolves some of the intensity of your pain. Really powerful stuff. All right, the next big idea is embrace the ego, then drop it. Quote, each individual has to be taught the ego before he will be able to drop it. Each individual has to come to a very crystallized ego. Only then is the dropping of any help, otherwise not, end quote. Osho talks about Nietzsche's three stages of evolution, the camel, the lion, and the child. The camel is unconscious. It carries the load of society's thou shalts and thou shalt nots. The lion destroys the past and its laws to create a new future. It takes courage and self-love to move from the camel to the lion and become an individual. From there, you become the child, perfectly present in the moment, beyond the yes of the camel and the no of the lion, in the present moment, beyond the past of the camel and the future of the lion. The point here is that you can't drop what you never had. If you never fully destroyed the conditioning and created a powerful personal ego, you can't move past both to the innocent child. So if you're still a camel, let out a little roar, will you? Become the lion. And if you're a bohemian lion, open into the mystery and wonder of the whole. Become the child. A lot more we can talk about on that one, but uh, that's a quick look at Nietzsche's stages of evolution. The camel, the lion, and the child. We've got to crystallize the ego Become the lion before we can let it go and become the child. Check out the book for more on that. All right, the next big idea is true discipline is self-discipline. Quote, I am not against rules, but the rules should arise out of your understanding. They should not be imposed from the outside. I am not against discipline, but discipline should not be slavery. All true discipline is self-discipline, and self-discipline is never against freedom. In fact, it is the latter to freedom. Only disciplined people become free, but their discipline is not obedience to others. Their discipline is obedience to their own voice, and they are ready to risk anything for it. End quote. That's genius. Lao Tzu and Nietzsche come to mind here. Lao Tzu says, He who controls others may be powerful, but he who has mastered himself is mightier still. And he also says, don't think you can attain total awareness and whole enlightenment without proper discipline and practice. This is egomania. Appropriate rituals channel your emotions and life energy toward the light. Without the discipline to practice them, you will tumble constantly backward into darkness. Nietzsche said, he who cannot command himself should obey. And many can command themselves, but much is still lacking before they can obey themselves. That's awesome. So we need discipline. The question is, whose rules are we following? 
our own or society's. As Osho says, quote, let your own awareness decide your lifestyle, life pattern. Don't allow anybody else to decide it. That is a sin to allow anybody else to decide it. Why is it a sin? Because you will never be in your life. It will remain superficial. It'll be hypocrisy. The next big idea is imitation is crime. Quote, each person is born with a unique individuality. And each person has a destiny of his or her own. Imitation is crime. It is criminal. If you try to become a Buddha, you may look like Buddha, you may walk like him, you may talk like him, but you will miss. You will miss all that life was ready to deliver to you. Buddha happens only once. It is not in the nature of things to repeat. Existence is so creative that it never repeats anything. You cannot find another human being in the present, in the past, or in the future who is going to resemble you exactly. It has never happened. The human being is not a mechanism like Ford cars on an assembly line. Never imitate anybody. End quote. I love that. Imitation is crime. It is criminal, Osho says. Those are strong words, very deliberately chosen. Take them literally. Emerson says the same thing and goes a step further. He says, envy is ignorance. Imitation is suicide. Envy is ignorance? Why is that? Because the only way you could ever envy anyone is if you totally missed your own unique expression of the divine. And to imitate is suicide. Why? Because in trying to be someone else, you just killed the best within you. Nature didn't create you so you can try to be a second-rate version of someone else. You have a unique constellation of gifts and experiences that give you a beautiful destiny all your own. So quit comparing yourself to anyone else and go deep within your soul to discover who you are and how you can radiate that joy to the world. Pretty please. All right, the next big idea, our work will be our soul. Quote, people will express their creativity. There will be musicians. There will be dancers. There will be painters, carpenters. There will be all sorts of creativity around the world. But nobody is competing with anybody else. He is simply doing his best. It is his joy. The joy is not in competing. The joy is not in coming first. The joy is in doing it. It is not outside the act. It is intrinsic in the act. That's my image of the new humanity. We will work, but our work will be our life, our very soul. Whatever we do, it won't matter. End quote. That's beautiful. Imagine a world where we simply create joyfully, expressing ourselves fully and sharing our gifts way beyond the fear of competition. Get that picture nice and clear in your mind's eye and then realize that we can only create it if each of us is living from that reality. I've had an allergy to the whole idea of competition for quite a while now. It's so much more fun and easier to just get really clear on what my gifts are and audaciously give them to the world, knowing that as I do so, I'll be just fine. So how are you showing up these days? Are you fearlessly and simply doing your best? Or are you fearfully worrying about your supposed competition and how you're stacking up? How can you give your very soul to the world through your work a little bit more today. Get on that. That leads to the next big idea. Express yourself without fear. Quote, express yourself in as many ways as possible without fear. There is nothing to fear. There is nobody who's going to punish or reward you. If you express your being in its truest form, in its natural flow, you will be rewarded immediately. Not tomorrow, but today, here and now. You are punished only when you go against your own nature. But the punishment is a help. It is simply an indication that you have moved away from nature. You have gone a little astray, off the road. Come back. Punishment is not revenge. No, punishment is only an effort to wake you up. What are you doing? Something is wrong. Something is going against yourself. That's why there is pain. There is anxiety. There is anguish. End quote. How we feel is simply an indicator of how connected we are to God, the divine, insert favorite descriptor here. Feeling joyful? Sweet. God's in the house. Literally. In fact, the Greeks called it entheos, describing the fact that God is within, entheos. Today we call it enthusiasm. 
Feeling not so hot? Awesome. That's God's little reminder you're disconnected. Don't fret, just plug back in. How? Most importantly, authentically express yourself without fear. Be you. Quit arguing with reality. Fill up with source energy in all the ways you know work for you. From proper rest and meditation to exercise, proper nutrition, taking a bath, journaling, whatever. In any case, just look at your funkiness as an alarm clock waking you up. Leads us to the next big idea, responsibility Osho style. Quote, the word responsibility has been used the wrong way. It gives a feeling of burden. You have to do it. It is a duty. If you don't do it, you will feel guilty. I want to remind you that the word responsibility has none of those connotations. Break the word in two, responsibility, and you enter a totally different meaning of the word, a different direction. Responsibility simply means spontaneous response. Whatever situation arises, joyously respond to it with your totality, with your intensity. And the response will not only change the situation, it will change you. End quote. All the great teachers point this one out. Do you have the ability to choose your response? Get on that. And here's the final big idea. The potential becoming the actual. Quote, man is not born perfect. He is born incomplete. He is born as a process. He is born on the way as a pilgrim. That is his agony and his ecstasy too. Agony because he cannot rest. He has to go ahead. He has always to go ahead. He has to seek and search and explore. He has to become because his being arises only through becoming. Becoming is his being. He can only be if he is on the move. Evolution is intrinsic to man's nature. Evolution is his very soul. And those who take themselves for granted remain unfulfilled. Those who think they are born complete remain unevolved. Then the seed remains the seed. It never becomes a tree and never knows the joys of spring and the sunshine and the rain and the ecstasy of bursting into millions of flowers. That explosion is the fulfillment. That explosion is what existence is all about exploding into millions of flowers. When the potential becomes the actual, only then is man fulfilled. End quote. Well, that is amazing. And uh, it's worth rewinding and listening to again. I will note that Abraham Maslow says the same thing in his genius declaration. What one can be, one must be. If there's one phrase that captures the essence of my philosophy, it would probably be that. What one can be, one must be. There's a divine impulse for us to express ourselves most fully in every capacity, creativity, love, etc. What one can be, one must be. So I leave you with this question. What must you be, my friend? That wraps up the note. I will now share with you a bit about the author of the book of Understanding Osho, suggest some other philosopher's notes you might enjoy, and then share the quotes from the sidebar. So the Osho teachings defy categorization. This is about Osho, covering everything from the individual quest for meaning to the most urgent social and political issues facing society today. His books are not written, but are transcribed from audio and video recordings of extemporaneous talks given to international audiences over a period of 35 years. Osho has been described by the Sunday Times in London as one of the 1,000 makers of the 20th century, and by American author Tom Robbins as the most dangerous man since Jesus Christ. That's from the book. You can learn more about all things Osho at www.osho. Dot com. That's O-S-H-O dot com. So if you like this note, I think you'll also enjoy the philosopher's notes on Thus Spoke Zarathustra by Nietzsche, the philosopher's notes on The Fountainhead by Ayn Rand, on The Power of Myth and a Joseph Campbell Companion, as well as Loving What Is, Byron Katie's great book. So now some of the quotes. When the potential becomes the actual, only then is man fulfilled. Live dangerously. And when I say live dangerously, I mean live according to your own self, whatever the cost. Whatever is at stake, live according to your own consciousness, according to your own heart and feeling. 
drop all comparison. Drop all these stupid ideas of being superior and inferior. You are neither superior nor inferior. You are simply yourself. There exists no one like you, no one with whom you can be compared. Then, suddenly, you are at home. If you are clean inside, having no wounds of inferiority, then who cares what people expect of you? You have never fulfilled anybody's expectations. You have been simply living your life according to your own insight, intuition, intelligence. Being is so significant that it is irreplaceable. You are just yourself. Do something that comes out of you, not to assert, but to express. Sing your song, dance your dance, rejoice in being whatever nature has chosen you to be. Zarathustra is beautiful, Buddha is beautiful, Lao Tzu is beautiful, Jesus is beautiful, but they are no longer applicable. They lived their lives, they flowered beautifully. Learn through them, but don't be a stupid follower. It does not matter what you do. What matters is how you do it, of your own accord, with your own vision, with your own love. Then whatever you touch becomes gold. There is no need to develop a conscience at all. What is needed is consciousness, not conscience. Conscience is a pseudo thing. Conscience is created in you by the society, and it is a subtle form of slavery. Don't be uptight. Don't live life according to principles. Live life in its totality. Drink life in its totality. Unless you taste totally, you cannot say. And when you taste totally, you still cannot say, because what you know is such that no words are adequate. Peace has to dance and silence has to sing. And unless your innermost realization becomes a laughter, something is still lacking. Something still has to be done. Your effort to be in the middle, and to be in the middle forever and always, is creating unnecessary anxiety for you. In fact, a desire to be in the middle forever is another extreme. The worst kind of extreme, because it is the impossible kind. It cannot be fulfilled. Just think of an old-fashioned clock. If you hold the pendulum exactly in the middle, the clock will stop. The clock works only because the pendulum goes on moving from the left to the right, from the right to the left. Yes, each time it passes through the middle, and there is a moment of that middleness, but only a moment. Don't avoid the extremes, and don't choose any one extreme. When you are total, it is good, and when you are divided, it is evil. Divided, you suffer. United, you dance, you sing, you celebrate. And there is nowhere to stop. In life, there is no full stop, not even a semicolon, just commas. Just for a while you can rest, but the rest is just to gather energy to go forward, to go upward. If we want to change the society, we have to change the individual. That is a very quick look at an incredible book, The Book of Understanding by Osho, Creating Your Own Path to Freedom. Hope you enjoyed. And very much looking forward to sharing more with you soon. Have a fantastic day. We hope you enjoyed this Philosopher's Note. Please go to www.philosophersnotes.com to download more.